so did you approach um dr john kirkpatrick or how, how did you kind of connect with him how did that happen um there's a lot in that report um there's a lot missing from that report that i couldn't include because i can't editorialize you know he's, he's smart in the way that he decides who he talks to and what publications and stuff um like it's interesting like, here's one line that was cut out from the piece i'll read it to you if you want sure um so i said in fairness to people um on the other side of this debate uh, couldn't the companies and the government departments that Kirkpatrick investigated simply be lying about reverse engineering crashed spaceships? Kirkpatrick is adamant that they're not. Over on X, Twitter, whatever we call it now, and I know that you've had some backlash. and um... Because at the moment, this is the thing, this is why Kirkpatrick and people like him are in a good position, because the burden of proof is not on them, is it? They're not making the claim. Exactly. <laughs> How's your day been? An interesting one. You know, I, I usually don't deal with um, topics that elicit such emotion in people. Well, they do, but not this kind of uh, passion. So it's been interesting. Yeah. Can I ask just before we sort of jump into the article, what kind of first piqued your interest in the subject, the UFO UAP kind of subject? Where'd that start? I think that goes back to like 2017. It did for everyone because um, I always um, had UFOs and aliens in a box map bullshit, I guess, along with ghosts and Jesus Christ. Um, and then the New York Times article came out. Obama was saying that, yeah, there's things going on in our skies that we can't explain. And then you had testimony from naval pilots and uh, people the intelligence community and i just thought oh okay maybe i was completely wrong and unfair to have it in that box um so so yeah that's what piqued my interest because it kind of changed my whole <clears throat> frame of reference uh and it still has to this day even though i've done an interview with sean kirkpatrick um there's a lot in that report um there's a lot missing from that report that i couldn't include because i can't editorialize i can't have my own opinion and i had an 800 word limit to begin with. So just think about all the information that you know about regarding this topic and then try and distill that into 800 words. Plus you've got to in interview this guy and include his interview. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get into those details if you want. Yeah. So well, where did, anyway, that's did, did, did you, yeah, thanks for that, man. Did, did you, so was this an article that you kind of, I mean, I don't understand how it works in as a kind of reporter. Do, does somebody come to you with a subject and say, we'd like to cover this, or is this your idea and you, how, how does that work? Well, no, I'm writing a book. Um, the provisional title is A Little Green Men, and people are um, annoyed at that because they think it trivialises this issue, which I can see, I can see that point of view there, but it's just a placeholder and, this is just a fun topic as well. Like aliens and UFOs is fun. It's just, it's a cool topic. I don't understand why people get so cross about it. But anyway, um, so yeah, I'm writing the book. So for the book, uh, I wanted to interview Sean because he's the latest official to um, do a report and I just wanted to get his take on it. Um, and again, obviously, I'm in touch with Jeremy Corbell. I've interviewed um, Ryan Graves, uh, Matthew Roberts, who was an engineer on the Roosevelt, I believe. Um, so I've got all these sides of the story, but again, I'm limited uh, to what I can to what I can use. So if people hang on and, and wait for this book to come out, it'll have all sides of this, every yeah. side of it. Yeah, yeah. So so when you when when you sort of so did you approach um, Dr. John Kirkpatrick or how how did you kind of connect with him? How did that happen? Just approached him. I mean, I won't tell you how I got his email and stuff because that would portray certain confidences. Um, not like something feeling spooky or anything like that, but, but you know, I don't think the person who gave me the email would want to know, know yeah. what any of everyone to know that the, he shared the, the guy's email. But yeah, just contacted him. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I I think the reason I asked that question is because some people will. There's certainly a conspiratorial element to the UFO community, and I use that in inverted commas. Uh, but it's kind of, you know, I guess the... the Mate, I'm, a working, I'm a working class lad from Manchester. <laughs> I'm a working class lad from Manchester. What connection do I have in the Pentagon? 
Yeah. I mean, what do they think that I'm I'm there collaborating with them, going, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll make sure we we uh, do this psyops and convince everyone that you don't have the aliens. Come on, man. I understand. I, I, no, I think the the thought process is that they'll slowly feed information out to to various mainstream media outlets, and the Guardian is, you know, is a big news publication in the UK. And um, perhaps people might not necessarily be aware of it in the US, but certainly in the UK, it's big. You know, the Guardian has got um, a lot of you know huge readership, and and it's kind of considered to be a very mainstream, serious news outlet. So I guess their thought is that stuff slowly gets kind of fed out. So it was interesting. I mean, I asked that question because I wasn't sure if they'd contacted you to say, hey, do you want to talk to this person or if you've contacted them? So that's interesting to know. I've oh. contacted them. And um, like, it's interesting. Like, here's one line that was cut out from the piece. I'll read it to you if you want. Sure. Um, so I said, in fairness to people um, on the other side of this debate, uh, couldn't the companies and the government departments that Kurt Patrick investigated simply be lying about reverse engineering crashed spaceships? Kurt Patrick is adamant that they're not. And he says, one, we were clear to everything that those industry partners are working on. We've known them. We know who they are. We know what programs they have. We know what they're doing. And I said, he adds that lying would hurt their chances of getting future government contracts. And then I say, here, Kurt Patrick sounds like many of the UFO conspiracy theorists out there. There's no good reason to believe that the government or companies are reverse engineering UFOs, but saying he knows the people and the jobs they have, thus they are telling the truth, is the equivalent of, trust me, bro, this guy's legit. And that got cut from the piece. Yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's fair. Like, you, you know, he he's basing a lot of this on faith in here and the people that he's talking to are telling him the truth. Yeah, yeah. So, that's a really, really good point. And I think there was a... There was a, some comments before about when the Arrow report came out, they essentially said, or he had said, you know, I've, I've spoken to these people and I think he did a um, a media interview previously where he basically said, look, people come to me, the whistleblowers come to me and they give me information and then I um, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll anonymize that information and I'll go to the relevant heads of those particular teams or departments and I'll, I'll ask them, is this your operation? Is this true? And, and they tell me no. And it's kind of like if you were investigating a crime, you wouldn't kind of phone up the suspects and go, look, someone said such and such. Is it true? Yes or no? You'd go down there and without note, you know what I mean? And I guess yeah, that's, that's, a really, that's a really good point. That's completely legit. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I weren't satisfied with his answers about the videos. So I asked him about gimbal um, and I didn't, I missed the fact that the gimbal video was taken at night. So when he said it could have been a reflection from a balloon, I didn't pick up on that and, and challenge him on that. Um, and that's just a problem. Like I'm not an expert. So any of the guys from this community would probably be in a better position to interview these people than I would. Okay. Cause you know, all the details, there are be things that I miss cause I'm not, although I am looking into this topic, I'm not as well informed as a lot of people out there. But anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't convinced by the gimbal thing. Cause like I said, I've spoke to Ryan Graves and other pilots that I can't name and, it's just too much testimony that contradicts that. Um, with the gimbal, he said there was a whole fleet of them as well. So, and it might be they're just drones. Who knows? Uh, no one can say what they are. But again, I just weren't. I wasn't satisfied with it because um, even Mick West, who's a skeptic um, and doesn't have the resources of the the Pentagon, managed to do a better job on that gimbal video. Um, like Mick or not, I mean, he he did a bloody good job there. I thought very thorough. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. and that's the thing. I mean, at least with Mick, and and you know, I disagree with Mick about a lot of stuff. I've interviewed him on the podcast. I think he's a really you know respectful person. I can have a good conversation yeah. with him, and he will tell you why he thinks and he's come to that conclusion. I think that's what was missing from the Arrow thing was we've reviewed this and we yeah. disagree, but we can't really say why. <laughs> you know, it's kind of we'll show yeah. us later. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and. Um, you know, on the other st stuff as well, so, so all the background in RSAP, and um, I think people are like, because I think Stephen Greenstreet's done a really good job in reporting on some of this stuff. I mean, I, I know most of it is public record. It's it's in the uh, the book, was it um, Hunting the Skinwalker and Skinwalkers at the Pentagon? Yeah. Um, a lot of that stuff's out there. I mean... I don't agree with Stephen's conclusions on this. That's just because they're in they're into this spooky stuff means they're wrong about UFOs. And the analogy I give is that if your taxi driver picked you up and he had a statue of St. Christopher, the patron saint of travel on his dashboard, you'd still get in the car and trust him to drive. 
Yeah. Just because he's superstitious about one thing doesn't mean he's wrong about everything or is not capable of rational thought. So I I I don't think it means much the fact that they were looking for skinwalkers and ghosts and all that. It's, it's it's inconvenient for them and their reputation maybe, but I don't think it I think it's irrelevant really. Um, you know, when we're talking about the existence of UFOs and whether or not they're uh, have an extraterrestrial or non-human origin and all that thing, all that stuff's up in the air, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No pun, no pun intended. <laughs> or in the water. <laughs> yeah, or in the water, yeah, yeah. Um, can we just sort of touch on you? Obviously, following your your stuff on on over on X, Twitter, whatever we call it now, and I know that you've had some backlash and um and some some abuse. You've received some abuse. And firstly, I would say, from somebody within that, I consider myself within that community. That's unacceptable, and I, I apologise on on their behalf if you've had that. That's not that's not fair and not reasonable. And you know, that's oh, it's all right. I think I'm just getting a bit high and mighty. Um, I, I can take being called a twat and a, all that. That <laughs> doesn't really bother me. Um, but yeah, I just think, calm down, look, guys. It this is supposed to be a fun topic. And if I'm wrong, I'm I'm wrong. And if I've made errors, I've made errors. I'm not perfect. Um, but again, this is a limited piece where I'm interviewing um someone, and I can just rep- I'm only there to report on what he's telling me. Now I tried to contradict him and stuff, but that stuff got chopped out, and I don't know why. I think it's probably because it's it it veers into editorializing an opinion. Yeah. Okay. So if this was more of a feature, a long form feature, like I've written one on alien abductees and I interviewed Abby Loeb and in that I do offer um, di- different views and I put my own views in there and because you can get into the weeds a bit more. But yeah, unfortunately for this piece, it's it's not that. So Yeah. You've, you've made um, at least one correction that I've seen already and I, I, I've seen that there was a, a mention of who somebody turned up at his address or tried to break into his address yeah. thinking it was the wording of that was actually somebody turned up and, and you know, all well, credit to you. That was, you know, that was... Um, it was so, stu- so stupid. I'm just, I'm sometimes I'm really stupid. Like the transcript, it said, yes, yeah, someone turned up to his house and it said someone had broken into his uh, online accounts. I'm f- for whatever reason, when I was rushing, I just conflated those two things. And, and I noticed it straight away. But usually you get a chance to see a piece before it goes out. But this time it was rushed through. So the editor asked me, you know, if there's any errors after he'd already put it out. And I was like, I know, okay, I'll look through it. And then then when I read that back, I thought, oh, that's not, I don't think that's quite right. So I went into my transcript and then, then changed it. Yeah. That's what people need to understand as well. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make we're going to make mistakes and I know that's a glaring one um you know but yeah. I mean the, the the truth of it still that's one did turn up at his house and he has been getting harassed hasn't he so it's all right it's not strictly true but it's been modified it's been modified now and I think yeah. it's fair to say that well at least he claims he's being harassed on that so yeah no I appreciate that um yeah I mean there's 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 certainly that kind of element to when you come out with something that kind of changes somebody's worldview, they're going to get kind of pushed back, aren't they? And I think he, he must have known, certainly not, you know, I'm not kind of uh, not saying it's, it's in any way acceptable to turn up at people's houses or, or any kind of abuse, but in terms of kind of constructive or what should be constructive kind of um, challenge, you know, the head of arrow is going to be, or the director, I know appreciate he's kind of moved on, although he's a consultant still to arrow. Um, there's kind of going to be an element of kind of back and forth. And he's been very picky with who he speaks to. And there's yeah. only a few. And, and, you know, to see your article come up, it's got, oh, okay, he's, he's sp- spoken to someone in the UK. That's that's interesting. Um, but he won't talk to me. You know, he won't talk to a load of other kind of people who are kind of clearly on this side of, you know, um, of, of the argument, I guess. So it's, you know, he's, he's smart in the way that he decides who he talks to and what publications and stuff. Um, I, I mean, I would probably read a little bit into that more than perhaps others. Um, but, you know, I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you kind of covering it and and agreeing to speak to me about it and kind of correcting bits and pieces that are out there. Um, can I ask it just with regards to your, so you're, you say you're, you're writing a book at the moment about the subject. Can you talk a bit more yeah. about that? Yeah. So um, this is, the book I'm writing is basically, um, a first person journey through the world of uh, ufology and and um started by traveling to Boston. I interviewed Abby Loeb 
um, who, for those who don't know, but I'm sure your audience knows all about him. He's a he's a physicist at Harvard, and um, he's head of the Galileo project, which is a project that aims to map out the sky with cameras and record what's um, got going on. He also wrote a paper about um, an asteroid that passed through our solar system back in 2014, I believe it was, um, called a Muamua, which is Hawaiian for scout. Um, and his hypothesis is that because it didn't have a telltale cometary tail, it um, and, and because of its speed and some other technical data, that it might be a, it's an interstellar object and it might have a it might be artificial. Um, obviously, some people think it's actually um, the reason it doesn't have a cometary tail is because it's been propelled by. Uh, an, an an icy core that's melting and propelling it like a jet sort of thing. Uh, I'm not a scientist, as you can probably tell there. Um, but yeah, I talked to him about that and also his expedition in uh, the Pacific Ocean. He's dredging the oceans for spherules from a from a, a meteorite that crashed here. And his hypothesis again is that that that's um uh, intersolar uh, object and it could have artificial quantities. He's just got to go and find bigger bits. And he thinks that because the composition of elements is unlike any composition of elements you'd find on Earth for a bunch of technical reasons that I don't understand. Um, but anyway, I interviewed him at his house. He's a lovely man. And I went to his play, interesting enough, the next day. It's like a one-man show about his research and his life, which was really interesting and bizarre. Uh, but... Um, and then from there, I kind of traveled the US. I, I went to a MUFON boot camp in Arizona and um, <laughs> underwent a boot camp for trying to look for UFOs. We did that in the Arizona desert, which was really interesting again. Um, I've spoke to Nick Hope. I've spoke to lots of people from, um, from the military and people associated with this topic in one way or another. Um, including like grassroots UFO groups in Manchester and 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 also these two guys in New Jersey who did a UFO hoax, I, I think like in two thousand and one maybe or whenever it was, um, yeah. So it's it's kind of like an, an odyssey through the whole the whole topic. Um, also, yeah, I, um, there's a whole section on abductions which I've actually written about before. I spoke to Terry Lovelace, um, who claims he was abducted in 1980 uh, in Devil's Den National Park. And um, a guy called Alan Godfrey, who's, who's from the UK, actually just up the road from me in Todmorden, Yorkshire. He was a, a copper a police officer, um, for your American listeners, um, who claims he was abducted when he was on duty. Um, so his story's in there. And so, yeah, it's basically just a journey through this through this topic and um it's a bit like john ronson i don't know if you're familiar with john ronson no he wrote like the psychopath test and the many stare at goats so it's kind of that quest narrative and uh, non-fiction so it's hopefully read like a novel but it's actually based on true events so oh, awesome when's that yeah. when are you looking at kind of trying to finish that or publish that what's the kind of time that should about? be out that should be out next year cool. and that's with penguin publishing so that'll be out next year hopefully awesome okay, nice yeah one. and hopefully with the book it'll 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 just have broader scope so yeah. everyone will get their have their voices heard you know yeah brilliant. that's what i want so awesome well look i've, I've got a, a, f a few kind of first hands or well, say a few a couple of first hand um kind of witnesses who have, have provided evidence to arrow so if, if if there's some sort of contacts i can push your way absolutely you know, Will and yeah, I mean, one of the things that people are claiming is that they've contacted Arrow and Sean Kirkpatrick, but he hasn't followed up or they've dismissed them out of hand. Yeah. So if 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 people could provide those email exchanges and obviously anonymize the names and all that, then that would go some way into contradicting what he's saying, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, but the problem is, this is why it's not included in the piece, is because there's nothing concrete or empirical that contradicts directly what he's saying. It's it's just stories. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not commenting on the um the veracity of those stories because people might be telling the truth for all I know, um. But you know what I can't do is I can't do anything with stories. I need some evidence yeah. because at the moment the, the, this is the thing. This is why Kirkpatrick 
and people like him are in a good position because the burden of proof is not on them, is it? They're not making the claim. Exactly. And also they've kind of, they've got the control of it. And if we're talking about physical data, we're talking about craft, we're talking about biologics, whatever it is, that physical stuff that people want, the data, they're in control of that. They're sure. in control of the safe. Whereas everybody else, they all they can produce and bring to the party is their their evidence, their witness testimony, obviously their credibility, but their testimony. I think the issue with Arrow and the, the issue that people take with it is that um, Arrow have basically said, yeah, there's tons of people that have got huge, you know, highly credentialed people would have held these kind of security clearances. And they're saying this really outrageous stuff, but it's just witness testimony and we don't count that. So finished. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of, that's yeah. the end. Of it. And, and they certainly hold all the cards there, I think, which is why it's... Yeah, it's a really difficult one to kind of prove from from this side of it. Definitely. Yeah, but the thing that Patrick's saying that all this stuff that David Grush is talking about when it comes to um, reverse engineering alien spaceships and possession of non-human biology biologics, yeah, um, that all comes from a core group. Mm. Of, you know what can loosely be described as a UFO lobby um, that has origins in RSAT. So. If people, if he wants to contradict that and come forward with the people he's claimed to have spoken to, just include it in an email, produce the email thread. If he's told Kirkpatrick and Arrow this, show us the email thread. Yeah. Blank out the names so you don't want to betray anyone's confidences, but show us. And then that contradicts what Kirkpatrick's saying then, doesn't it? And then it shows that everyone that he is lying. But at the moment, you're not doing that. And then people are saying they're not doing it because of the consequences um, and that's another problem, isn't it? If there are going to be severe consequences for whistleblowing, I suppose that is an um, effective deterrent. But, but at the same time, I think if someone had the smoking gun in their hands and showed the public, I don't think they'd be going to jail. I think they'd be getting a Nobel Prize, wouldn't they? So yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. If you've no, got I, the evidence, show us. Just show us, man. You know. I, I agree, and I think that you're right, and I, I'm kind of part of me is hoping. I know that um, David Grush's op-ed is due out soon, and you know, fingers crossed, you you, you you'll cover that. But it it certainly, when you look at the um, when you look at the information, I mean, the issue that I have, and this is just from my perspective, if if David Grush gave this information to the intelligence community inspector general, and they've got the locations, the names of the programs, the people involved in the programs, and Dave and Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick has said, I've got access to everything that I need. I've got top end, top end clearances. No problem with that at all. Why do you need to speak to David Grush? You know, he's made this claim, this huge claim. I would say the biggest thing that should be kind of investigated first before you do all the historic stuff. Why don't you just go to the ICIG? I need to see that report and then I'll investigate the report. And he's not sort of done that or said why he has, or why he hasn't done it. And that that's what kind of, I find really strange. It's like, he said he knows where the location of the craft are and he's given that to the ICIG. Just find out what the locations are. Go down there with your team because then you're in a, such a strong position where you can say to the world, I've been to the actual locations that David Grush has said that the crafts are is empty. And that put it to bed. But the fact that he mm. hasn't done that is what I find just extraordinary because it's, you know, he's gone to great lengths to kind of say, you know, we've been really thorough, but yeah, that's a real simple kind of, that's what I'd do, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't speak for Kirkpatrick, but I think one of the things he might say is he probably can't disclose the locations of companies he investigated. In fact, he said that to me. I said, "Do you know? Can you give me the names of these private companies?" Because one of the claims he makes is that this core group of um, UFO activists um, gave a bit of UFO material to uh, an engineering company. And then pointed at them and said, look, they're reverse engineering UFOs. Look at what they're hiding. So he's claiming that they're basically creating us what he would call self-licking ice cream, right? So, yeah. But when I asked him what private company that was, he, he said he couldn't say. So that's a lot of it, isn't it? They can hide behind um, confidentiality and secrecy and all that. Yeah. That's the, that's the problem with all. So I think it's probably gonna have to take someone really brave, like an Ed Snowden character, to just if the smoking gun does exist. And when I say smoking gun, I mean evidence that's be, that would be beyond all reasonable doubt, right? Something really tangible that even the most skeptical of skeptics like Mitt West couldn't 
uh, deny. And probably wouldn't want to deny. I've spoken to him at West. I, I, I think he would accept any evidence that was out there. Um, but that, that hasn't been produced. And until it is, this debate's going to rage on. This, you know. Um, so it's in your hands, guys, if you're out there, if you're sitting on this stuff and then just... <laughs> I don't know. I know it's. A, I don't know if it's a sacrifice I would make, if if a jail cell was the, or you know, a noose was the, <laughs> the, the final consequence. But then I mean, that's what it's going to take in it. Like, because obviously, Sean Kirkpatrick isn't going to reveal anything. And if the government do have possession of these things, are they really going to allow the UAP office to disclose it if it's that secretive? That's the thing, isn't it? Well, this is it. I mean, if if they if they follow the law, the legislation, the UAP Disclosure Act that you know that's coming in imminently or is in now, not quite. I don't quite fully understand the American how it's how it works, but it should be kind of in force now or very soon. So, in theory, yeah. they have to they have to disclose. You know, um, yeah, they try to, uh, and then it you know goes through whoever to make a decision as to whether or not it's uh, national security stuff. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm. I'm glad that you're reporting on it. Um, I, you know, I hope that continues, and I'm, I kind of look forward to to sort of reading more. And hopefully, as I say, David Grush's op-ed will potentially cover some of this stuff and maybe explain why um, there's that big contradiction with him not coming, allegedly not coming to speak to to Patrick. Although, from what I've seen in some parts, Kirkpatrick has kind of made comments that he sent people, but they didn't have the re- relevant clearances to speak to him. But then he's kind of blaming that on Grush. So I don't really know. We kind of need clarification from from both sides, really. But hopefully, mm-hmm. we'll get some of that. So yeah, there's, there's so there's so much um, detail, isn't there, to wade through? That's that's another problem. So you just don't know where you are a lot of the time. Also, I just just want to say one thing about some of the language that was used because I know people think it's disparaging when I said "men in black" and um, uh, sending people into a tailspin. True believers. I'd, yeah, they are buzzwords, but I'm writing a an, I'm writing a news piece for people to read. It's, it's it's you know so. But when I say men in black, I just mean spooks from the CIA or the FBI or equivalent. When I'm saying true believers, I mean people who believe in this topic without having any reservations, and they are out there. You 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 know that as well as I do that there are people who doesn't matter what evidence comes to them, they'll they'll believe in this no matter what. So, so I think it's fair. Obviously, I did make a, a glaring error at the beginning, uh, which you know I corrected. And um, yeah, there's probably some other things I've got wrong, and I'll try and do better. And hopefully, the book will again it'll have um, more a more broader inclusion of it, of um, different voices. Yeah, that's what I hope anyway. Cool. Like I said, my I would love to believe in this shit. It would be mint if there were aliens knocking about. Do you know what I mean? It would be it would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Earth shattering. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm conscious of your time. I really appreciate you talking to me and um and like I say, just my apologies if you've had sort of abuse from people in the past. There's a super passionate group of people, and I think the vast majority are kind of good, wholesome, decent people that are just passionate. Um but but, I've heard worse come off the Stretford end when I got all trapped. <laughs> don't worry about it. I can it's imagine fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh I think I've just been a bit of a high and mighty there. Like, no, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah. When I see someone call me a twat on Twitter, I'm just like, oh, that's not very nice, is it? <laughs> I'm just like, all right, then. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm not, I'm, if for anyone out there, I'm not this Mr. High-profile journalist. I'm a freelancer for a start. I'm skint as well. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just doing my best, man, you know. You're not saying it, so, so the, the, the CIA payment isn't going to kind of help towards... <laughs> well, you know, that... <laughs> They're they're a bit they're a bit lax for the payment schedule, you know. Yes, <laughs> I just I do get it started. Yeah, I've been working for you a lot for years now. <laughs> Fucking, hell, I've seen no back end of it. <laughs> Danny, I'm going to let you get off. I know you. Um, I know you got stuff you got to get on with today. So look, I really appreciate your time and appreciate you talking to me. Um, oh, thanks, mate. Thanks for giving me the opportunity as well, because um, it's nice to have an opportunity to to like clarify things like that article is not going to do it justice is it this topic so hopefully i've shed a bit more light there and um yeah yeah see how people take it absolutely yeah man well let's stay in touch and you know let's talk again in the future and keep us informed about the book and any more articles and stuff i'm I'm, you know let's let's talk 
yeah, closer to time, send me your address. I'll send you a copy. I'll sign it and everything for oh. you and all that. Awesome. Nice one. Thanks, man. Take yeah. care. Take care, Paul. Bye. Bye.